How's it going, everybody? My name is Johnny Christ. You guys are getting ready to listen to a villain's gospel, but beforehand, we should let you know the following. The opinions of a villain's gospel does not reflect in any way, shape, or form the opinions and or views of Sky's Limit Media. So, sit back, relax, and try to have a sense of humor. Okay? Quit taking things so seriously. Good evening. Prepare yourself. You're about to learn a villain's gospel. It doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. I've been the best ever since day one. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. Oops, I'm breaking the fourth wall. Do it, I'm surrounded by assholes. Sit your five dollar ass down before I make change. Listen, I know how you all feel. When that furry tempts you, seems like she's calling your name. She said, get some up. Put your hand on. Look at this. You want, you want some up? Rub it on in there. Well, you fight me. Suck it, you filthy. Hey, where are the white women at? You are physically repulsive, intellectually retarded, vulgar, insensitive, selfish, stupid. You're going to see some serious shit. And now, introducing to you the congregation, the most diabolical minds you've ever heard. The Twisted Tyrants of Radio. Alright, what's going on everybody? It is Monday night, and you're tuned in to the only radio show where there's no BS radio here. Don't mind telling you. Hottest thing in the 941, baby. That's right. You are tuned in live to a villain's gospel. We'd like to thank each and every one of you guys for tuning in, hanging out with us, and making the right decision, because in this world we know that only one thing is for sure and that's life is too short for shitty radio so you are tuned into this wonderful two-hour abortion that's known as a villain's gospel and now the intros i am one of your hosts one half of the presidential masters of america mr i'm gonna get shit thrown at me for no apparent reason (laughs) i am known as johnny rudo but to all you people who love me dearly you can simply call me Sir or Johnny Christ, take your pick. <laughs> Jesus. I am the other half of your presidential masters of America. Your favorite Columbine kid. Arr. The hottest thing in the 941 today. Your friendly neighborhood shadow smurf. I am your modern day Jack the Ripper and the artist formerly known as Glitter Dick. I am the human horror show. And I'm rocking an eye patch. Zach fucking Monstar. Sweet. And we got... We got Miller. <laughs> Hi, Miller. I didn't know if you were done. I don't know. It gets longer each week. All, All right. right. That's what I'm never sure. Hi. Hi. Miller. I'm back. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? I'm so happy to have Miller back. And I do got to be honest, I feel like we're multiplying right now because there's another female and we ain't talking touchy. Unfortunately, Uncle Touchy cannot be here with us. He's out of state for work. So. Johnny, we're outnumbered. Ha ha. We're not really outnumbered, though. No, no, we are. I have the buttons. We're good. Ha ha! We still win. <laughs> ha! Um, we have our dear friend, Zach's dear friend. Hello. We got Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Thanks a lot for taking up two hours of your time. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks to Zach for driving me up here. Absolutely. Now, what type of car companion is young Zachary? Mainly a karaoke companion. Yeah. Oh, those are the best. We have so much fun, dude. Shout out to each and every one of you guys who are watching us on Facebook right now. Dodo, Nick, Max, Cody. Dodo, Dodo, Dodo. <laughs> Beth, Logan, on Zachary, Aww. Zachy Taylor. Yeah, that I. He's watching that guy. Am I what? I'm not watching. Yeah, I, I don't know. You commented, so it's just a force of habit. Why would I watch this? Because it's better than Raw, and it's better than anything else that's going on right now. I mean, let's be honest. I just needed some justification, and it's all truth that you're speaking. All truth. Woo! It's the best thing in 941. It is. And you know what? I have to be honest, and I've got to put this out there. I am loving Zachary's wonderful um, attitude as of late. It's good. (laughs) It's very good. I I I I hit rock bottom for a little bit and I just wanted to set the world on fire. And now I'm but ooh, okay. <laughs> I've gotten to the point now where this whole idea of getting a wrestling ring, buying a pirate boat, 
putting your said ring on boat and then sailing across the seas is coming more and more realistic every day. Is that a real thing? Oh, no, that's happening. <laughs> I'm getting a boat, I'm putting a ring on it, and I'm sailing across the seas so I can wrestle. King of the Seven Seas. Bam. New gimmick. N- gr- Screw Paul Burchell, man. <laughs> you got to add that to your intro. King of the Seven Seas. I can't. It's too long. That's what she said. Said no girl ever. <laughs> wow. Um. Yeah. W- no. No, we're not getting into that. No. No. <laughs> I don't know who said that, or if anybody did, I don't want to know. We'll say that. But it most definitely is good to have each and everybody hanging out with us. So we like to do this little thing as we do each and... Why are you being difficult? Don't be difficult. Don't be a dick. Um, Because it was made by a woman? Remember, you're outnumbered. So were you. (laughs) Oh! (laughs) She has a point. Shut up, lady! (laughs) You're killing us here. Chicken, Chicken before the egg. Really? All right. I'm the product of what happens when a lizard and an iguana have sex on a Ouija board. Chelsea, welcome to the show. Somebody called in. Hey, guys, you're watching a vis- yeah, I can't talk. What up, guys? Welcome to A Villain's Gospel. This is your friendly neighborhood <laughs> glitter dick. How may I assist you, Thank assert you, you and you hung up on us. You hung up? Took me by surprise. I apologize. That's okay. It happens. <laughs> I was in the middle of my Ouija board thing when they <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. I just want to send so- You're the product of a what? An iguana and an octopus having sex on a Ouija board? Yeah. Oh, like- man. <laughs> All right. We're done here. We got to call. So- we got to call Jesus. <laughs> so what we're going to do right now is we're going to do this week's weekend recap. Stand by. It's been one hell of a week. Now let's see how the weekend was. Sorry, we're going, we're going streaking through the quad and into the gymnasium. Come on, everybody! Let's party. Yeah, let's fucking rage! It's the weekend recap. It is the weekend recap for the first week in July, the year of our Lord. Whoever it is, doesn't matter. We will start with uh, the little tot, Chelsea. Chelsea, how was your weekend, Sheila? It was pretty good. I uh, drove up with this one to AWE on Saturday, punched Mandy in the face, and had overall a pretty good time. Yeah, but you didn't like really like jam her. You could have jammed her. I could have, but she's so damn cute. I'm I w- sorry? I would have gave her my pay if she would have rocked her. That makes two of us, and I don't even get paid. Yeah, but you're on the next one, right? I am on the next card. I'll be there in August. Actually, I will see you at LPW this month. That is correct. Fuck my life. She is correct. Damn. Rut row. Rut row. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, so you went up to or- uh, Cocoa Beach. My yeah. apologies. It's Orlando. <laughs> Same difference. <laughs> like it's there. It takes just as long to get there. Sure. Oh, my God. So what else did you do? I mean, surely a woman of your caliber has to have done things, maybe questionable, maybe not questionable. (laughs) I blasted through the fifth season of Orange is the New Black and finished a piece of gear, so there is that. All right, so you didn't do much. No, other than travel to Cocoa Beach. Like, I do a four-hour drive. Like, I'm spent for the weekend. I'm tired. I'm going to relax. Oh, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. We understand. So... Moving right along. Mila. Hi. Your very voice strikes me in such a way that can only be described in my cockles. How was your weekend, Princess? My weekend was good. We went to the... cockles. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a a child. (laughs) Well, and... That note, we went to the boat parade downtown on Friday night. How was that? Boat? Boat? Boat. Like, power boat, power uh, boat. Power boat uh. from the boat races. Uh, that was crazy. There were people all over, pissing in the street, yelling in the street. People were fighting. It was crazy down there. Did you say pissing in the street? Yes. Oh, classless. Yeah, right? All right, Sarasota. Way to pull through in the clutch. Keep it classy. Um, say, I was on your stomping grounds over at Smoke and Joe's. Hey. Nice. How was yeah. that? That was shot, shot, shot. Um, And then we had a little girls' day yesterday, and we went to the Rib Fest over at Darwin's, which was amazing. Um, all the donations went to Vets. 
So that was pretty cool. They ran out of ribs in like an hour. So there was lots of beer to be drank. And then today, this this rain is killing me. All I want to do on a long weekend is get sun. And this one, two o'clock rain is killing me. So right. I decided to spend a few good hours of my afternoon today over Sweet. at Kinky Kitty. Nice. Now, yeah. now. Now, for all of you who have no idea what Kinky Kitty is, Kinky Kitty is basically their their knockoff sex shop, if you will, over in Gulfgate here in Sarasota. Um, nice people. I know I know Jamie who works there. Super nice. Super nice. Really helpful. Super super tiny. <laughs> Looks like a spinner. Um, <laughs> so, what did you buy at the sex shop? That's not for you to know, but I did buy some analies. No, never again. <laughs> yeah, Zach put that on his tongue one time, and that was not a good idea. Never again. I was, never I was, back. I was stuck in a wall. I was, I was against. The, I, I had my back against the wall. Like I needed help, and he just watched and filmed it. <laughs> Analies on my tongue. Wanted to throw up. It was horrible. Ugh. Oh <laughs> well. I don't know if a lot of girls do this or if I'm the only one that does it, but when I went in, I totally lied, and I told her I was putting together a gift basket for one of my girlfriends and I was like oh I don't know if she'd be into this or I don't know if she'd be into that and now how there. often <laughs> now how often does that actually happen like do you think that that probably happens more than say the average I mean if I start going there more frequently I'm gonna have to come up with different excuses I think and I think that's why I bought so much because I was right. able to ride out with that excuse I was putting together a gift basket sure drop some cash and then maybe like three months down the road someone else will be working and i can use that excuse again but i'm i I wonder i wonder if that's like normal or if girls just go in there and they're like i'm looking for a really good like butt plug like if girls just go out and say that that. or i don't know but i lied I was gonna say it, it is that kind of store. Like when I go in, no shame. They that's they sell it. They, they're used to it. It's just like I need this, and then they'll have all sorts of recommendations based on what other people told them. I mean, it's not a bad deal if you just go in honest. Yeah, and a- after I left, they were so nice about everything that I was like excited to go to another store. I was like, oh, what else can I find? Did you I'm make an excursion out of this? <laughs> maybe I like maybe I should. So that's a pretty good call. Unless you turn around and you buy a fist. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. that. Like, if you're buying the fist, you should probably lie. That <laughs> is that is a brutal, brutal instrument. It is not used for anything enjoyable. And any woman who says that it is, I'm I'm calling bullshit. I don't believe it, and I don't buy it. Not even a little bit. I want to wrap it in barbed wire. No, I feel oh, like why? God. What a great idea. That's like for at home porn. Is it? What, a fist? Yeah, I feel like that that would be the only reason you buy that. Like, your husband wants to, like... No, that's, something, some that little... you, that's something that you carry around in the car f- with you for an attacker. <laughs> 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 Give me your car. Listen, you don't want these problems. Bam! Fist to the face. What's that? Tight chatterbait? <laughs> yeah. hus- oh. You and your husband want to make a few bucks? Go get the fist and throw it up on chatterbait. Yeah, like, that. there you go. That totally is probably, like, a more relevant thing than what we think. I guarantee. Absolutely. I have had guys in dating. I have had guys who have asked me if I would do that with them. And did you you do it? No, I've never done it. But it was something like within the first like two weeks of conversation, they wanted to know if I would be open to it. And it's been like two or three people. Hold on. Wait a minute. Is that there has to be a sound effect for that? You never go in two weeks and then turn around and be like, hey, are you interested in this? Never, ever do that. Where is that's it? like a th- it must have been a deal breaker for them or like a steady cash flow. That's like a week three type thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's like a week three. Like no. Oh, you're into pegging. Okay. Uh, <laughs> damn it. So we gotta go. But Let me th- show you this fist. <laughs> but like three weeks in, it's perfectly fine. You've already accommodated, and you guys are already fucking. So why not? Like well, I can't find the booing yeah. button. But just so you know, if I had a booing button, I'd be pressing it all day, lady. You'd be that. I would boo Why you that. Boo me, boo them. No, boo you. No, boo. <laughs> Why me. do I get booed? Boo because it. of the boo. fact that you're not willing to play ball. Boo for shame. <laughs> Level up, lady. <laughs> Maybe I'm like a seventy thirty split. 
banana? <laughs> banana. <laughs> like, that's how you break that tension. <laughs> I completely go with that one. Um, but, all right, so mm, Miller's not one for fisting on a first date. That's fine. No, that's like <laughs> boring. That's like a three weekend. Well, like. 21 day mark. Is it a 21 day mark? Yes. Like, like, when was the last time you took a fist, Chelsea? Never. Huh. Not my thing. Lush. <sighs> that's what I'm saying. Like, that you, you wait. All right, the first week you find out some stuff. The second week you're already doing stuff. So by the third week, you're fisting. Oh, yeah, totally. I get that. That's how that works. It, it's a progressive level. I I co-sign with that. And how many levels have you had that experience with, may I ask? I'm not allowed to talk about these things on the radio. No, anymore. we don't speak of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. All right, so yeah, so you bought some unmentionables at the Naughty Store. I did. Plug-in bought- vibrator. Plug-in vibrator. That should be your next investment. Plug-in fist? <laughs> <laughs> that thing's like an arm, Wait, man. Like- a fuck machine. Yes. What's a plug-in vibrator? It's Whoa. a vi- Whoa. Whoa. I've got one in the car. You can look at it. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight on A Villain's Gospel, <laughs> Miller gets... Oh, we do... <laughs> oh, he's running. He's and running. He's off. <laughs> he he's off. No, they're these um, wands. No, don't, were- don't, don't. No, 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 no. Just let her see it. Touch it. It's weird. Oh, God. Okay. Why, why are we touching things? I don't understand why he keeps it in the car, though. That's my, that's. It's you know what I did like see? Melt. Had I known there were two girls here, it, I did see, so, like, you put it inside of you, and then you give the guy the remote, <gasps> and, like, it's Bluetooth, so, like, you can, yeah. But they were, like, 215 bucks. No, I got it! You can also, <laughs> well, no, those things you can yeah. also hook up to your music, so it'll go, like, with the beat of the music. Oh, this is, like... Do I'm, not drop that. Do not! No. <laughs> no, they were originally sold to be uh, massagers, and then right. people... Oh, I saw, massagers. Okay, I oh, saw this on Sex in the City. It was, she said it was a neck massager. Um, yeah, that's no. what they're supposed to be. <laughs> no. Okay. Plug that I, thing in. So man. why do you keep it in the car? You because I haven't had a chance to put it in my house. You hesitated. You never know when you're going to need a plug-in vibrator. <laughs> it's a good call. Something could be on fire, and that could be the only way to... No. no. So why do you want to plug it in versus, like, the rechargeable ones? Trust me, when you feel the gigawatts running through that... It needs to be in a plug. It's stronger. Okay. It's got five speeds. Okay. <laughs> it's got five speeds. It's amazing. <laughs> it's got five speeds. Um, I have played Grand Theft Auto and gotten a girl off. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need you to sell the plug-in vibrator. The used plug-in vibrator. As, <laughs> as, look, she's like, she doesn't even want to touch it. She's like, no. It's been disinfected, lady. Yeah. So I need you to sell the plug-in okay. vibrator to Miller. All right. As a used car salesman. Oh my god! What a great call. <laughs> do you need? Do you need the prop? No. And I yes. Need, I give me the should. prop. And I need you to act like you're actually interested in buying. Like how many miles are on it? <laughs> like I like I did it. King, like okay. But I'm putting together a gift basket okay. for my He's friends. Like, yes. I'm getting ready. <laughs> Okay, so motivation, 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 motivation. All right, and uh, ding, Miller walks into the store. Scene. <laughs> Madam, <laughs> you look like a lady who knows class, style, and dignity. Have you heard about the Johnny Christ 2000? <laughs> I haven't. What's that? The Johnny Christ 2000 is the most sophisticated in female pleasures. <laughs> <gasps> Now, now I know it looks, well, for lack of a better term, dingy. Dingy. <laughs> However, you're the only one. It's got a purple mark right there. It's got a purple mark right there. Oh, it's used. Okay. It's not used. It's pre-owned. <laughs> it's a big difference. Okay. All right. Now, how old are you, princess? 17. You're 17. Get the <laughs> hell out of my store, lady. You're, out. you're done. You're fired. You're gone. I wanted to see where you're going to go with that. There's How old a- is your mother? <laughs> I need you to leave the store. The back door's open. No, never mind. How old is the co-signer on this lease? What did you just find out? This is not a Hitachi. <gasps> it's a body wand. Oh, not Piece off. of shit. Don't throw it. 
I know. Well, there goes that. End scene. That would be at a used car dealership, though. <laughs> it would. The knockoff. You don't get the Mustang. You get the Pinto. Oh. There was like an Ace Ventura moment in there for you. Oh, I just, totally. I just want to let you know that. <laughs> it was good stuff. So, so Miller had a great weekend. Zachary, how was your weekend? Allow me to tell you about my adventures. So, uh, <laughs> Saturday, drove up to AWE. Uh, did that. Beat the shit out of, like, multiple people. I saw that. Like, I wasn't in one match. I was in three. Right. Mainly towards the end where I just slid in and beat the shit out of everybody. <laughs> they loved me. They booed me. Somebody called me a pussy. I spit in their face. There it is. Sold a bunch of t-shirts, and I got a bunch of little kids running around with Monstar t-shirts. That's always fire. That's always fire. Uh, turned around. Uh, Friday, got off of work early. Um, had to take care of a few things. Ended up starting to build a Lego pirate ship. You know, I <laughs> uh, I was t- I was chit chatting with our with our brother uh, Brosif, and I said, "Hey, where's Zach?" I don't know. I'm like, "I'm sorry. What? Why don't you know?" He's busy building a pirate ship of Legos. <laughs> I said, "Is he really?" I was. Uh, I, I saw the pictures in the group. I was I, like, "Oh." I started I started building Friday around 11 o'clock at night and then um it's a solid pick though. I didn't I didn't turn around and stop building until like 6 a.m. Dude, I don't know. I just got in the zone, all right? You need to rehab. Like I got in the zone, I was quiet. Like I literally <laughs> just sat there Indian style on my floor and just started putting <laughs> together like all these Legos and I'm building a ship and I felt so productive. Like I think I found my calling in life. It, it's not being on the radio. It's not wrestling. It's somebody lock me in a room where I can just build Legos. You are a professional, professional Lego assembly engineer. There Talk you to go. Disney. Yeah, Disney. No. Why they- no, I've got a bone to pick with Disney because they won't let me play Kylo Ren. <laughs> they can they piss own- off. Don't they own Legoland? Yeah. They do not. Who no. does? No, they don't. The Lego Corporation, obviously. <laughs> Me and Johnny got kicked out of Lego. <laughs> well, the okay. minion still brings that up to this day. She's like, "Can we go to Legoland?" Yeah, no, that's a bad idea. You get kicked out of Legoland. <laughs> you little shit. <laughs> like, so uh, Friday did the Lego thing uh, after work, obviously. So it went work Lego. Uh, slept for like two hours, maybe Lego. three. Drove up to fucking Orlando. Love it. I uh, didn't get home until 5 in the morning where I woke up at 11 and decided to finish building my goddamn ship. You know what? Where I polished off a bottle of Jameson and then I went to work at 6. <laughs> it's so <laughs> true. It's so true. La- had a uh, Went to work, got off, fucking went home, ended up playing Lego Batman. I have a Lego problem, guys. You really truly do. Like at this point in time, I'm willing to admit it. I need help. So if anybody has like any Lego therapy, let me know. Uh, <laughs> what is Lego therapy? Perhaps that we can get some professional help for this. It's like AA, but for Legos. So uh, <laughs> That's a thing? I don't know, probably. So wait. Uh, today, woke up, had to take care of a few things, had a awesome lunch with an amazing human. <laughs> I'm sorry, but to me, you're like such a good human, as opposed to a non-good human, or maybe a robot, perhaps. Amazing human. Wow. Well, all right then. That's where we're at with that one. No, I'm trying to invite people. Oh, I want to perform. So, uh, yeah, had a lunch with an amazing human. So that was all awesome, and then I met up with this one, and now we're here. (laughs) Met up with this one. (laughs) You've been demoted. I call him this one too. So. Well, that's just uncalled for. Yeah, that's rude. That is so rude. That is so typical. Johnny, how was your weekend? My weekend was phenomenal. You know why my weekend was phenomenal? Because the Minion's here. Minion! Mm. The Minion. Awesome. And then I got into a 35-minute conversation about how icy bears are not that cool, but pandas are amazing. Pandas are picky fucking eaters is what they are. That's hey. why they're going in extinct very quickly. <laughs> no, that's not the reason why we're going They're extinct. taking the one-child policy just a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> Female pandas? They're like, please, somebody fuck me. Male pandas are like, eh. <laughs> You put me in a cage with anything for a week and I'll fuck it. <laughs> 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 
Pandas are dicks. They're also lazy. They are cunts. You know, they are so bad. Fuck you guys. I'm pretty productive for a panda. Oh, I'll give you that Legos. one. I built the shit out of that Lego. That was 2,400 pieces. You're, oh, yeah. You have any idea how long it takes to sit there for 2,400 <laughs> pieces and just be like, I'm going to put this fucking ship together. You know what the fucking thing on the box says? Well, what does it say? Eight plus. This, bo- this, uh, this boat does not float. <laughs> oh. Um, like, <laughs> Did you read that after you put it together? No, I, I What the hell, man? Uh, man, all right. So I, I need to I need to point this out. I, I bought the Lego on Thursday and I dropped two hundred and twenty two dollars on this Lego. What is with oh you, man? God. It was the only one, man. I went to Toys R Us, I'm looking for Legos and I'm like, maybe they have something else. Maybe I can just build like I don't know. <laughs> maybe a, they've got something else. A smaller boat. I don't know. I just wanted to build a pirate Lego. And uh no, it was the only one. It was the only oh. damn one. And it was the only boat that they had, and I was just like I'll regret this in the morning, but I'll still love myself later. <clears throat> I concur on that. The cashier looked at me, she was like, For your kid i said for me she was like my yes f- my fiance has a lego problem too and i was like it's not a problem it's a healthy habit it is why because it's not coke i and it's damn sure not the wacky tobacco that everybody else is used to smoke it it's simply lego yeah like realistically would you rather me spend two hundred dollars on a lego or two hundred dollars on an eight ball like i saw some really cool stuff at kinky kitty for two hundred dollars did it involve legos could no. it then i'm not interested oh it could <laughs> Oh. Oh. You have my attention. Oh. You have Yes. My, you have my attention. I feel a contest coming up. Oh. What oh, I, they totally need to go. make a yes. Lego sex toy. See? You don't want to Great play this minds. Game. Yes. I've got about 300 Legos at the house that I'm not using. Zach, I think we found your calling. I am got it. I'm on it. Oh, yes. I'm going home and building this. Get him some garbage paper. Yes. Although, what a great idea. I, uh, dude, like it's it's insane, man. I've 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 been on the internet like looking at like some of the most tedious Legos to like put together and stuff because I want them. Like the, yeah, <laughs> uh, like the Death Star is four thousand pieces. You get that, like, and surprisingly, like if you get the Death Star, like I'm dropping the minion off. I I already <laughs> I already ordered it. Damn you, dude! You gotta understand. Okay, so I found uh, I found this thing on eBay, and it's. It, okay, so you know how they do like uh, knockoffs of things, like yeah, Wish does that a lot. Like Skechers, like if you if you if you want a pair of Skechers that look like Skechers, but they're not really Skechers. Yeah, what is this like? Like New York City back in the early two thousands, where you get a, a you know a set of Dolce and Cabanas for like five bucks. Yeah, but I found I found like the Lego black market this week. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> like, like okay, so That's if the you, thing. if you go on eBay and you type in Lepin Lepin L E P I uh, L E P I N and then you type in whatever you're looking for, it'll pop up. I found um the black pearl for twenty bucks. Lepin. Lepin. You gotta go on eBay. Lepin. I'm on eBay. Lepin L E P I N. And then type in Star Wars or whatever. Holy shit, it's right there, black and white, clear as crystal, fucking Star Wars. It's the, not Mega Blocks? No, 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 no. They're not Mega Blocks. They are they are Legos. They're Japanese Legos. They're not real Legos. <laughs> they're, Jap- <laughs> they're Korean Legos, all right? Nine out of ten Americans can't tell the difference. Right, so but, they're made one more country over. So if you look at it, though, the uh, if you look at the Death Star, they have the original Death Star on there, and the original Death Star is over $500. I picked up the Death Star for, like, 150 Hmm. They have the Death Star for one forty-eight. <laughs> yeah, thirty-two hundred pieces. Jesus, it's actually more than that. No more. It, it's actually more than that. It's like four. Well, we need to get you a chick to ride your penis while you're putting together the Death Star. Like, so I bought the Death Star. I bought the original Ghostbusters like station. I co-signed it. Um, I bought this thing called uh. It's like a haunted house, but it has a uh, Frankenstein, Dracula, the bride. It has oh, lady, so good. lady Dracula, and it's a it's a full fledged. It looks like a dollhouse. You can fold it together, and when you open it up, it has like different layers and compartments. Okay, five thousand pieces. And then I started looking at like Lego building projects. Check this out. I just want a fucking Power Ranger Morpher. I don't need all that. <laughs> like, check this out. No, you don't even understand. Like, I'm heavy in the Lego game right now. Like, it's heavy. Like, guys, 
I, I, like, if you ever get back on Tinder, like, that needs to be your hashtag. My Lego <laughs> game is tight. Like, <laughs> on point, ladies. So I, uh, <laughs> I turn around and uh, I found uh, – I, I, I was looking for the Flying Dutchman. Like, that's what I was doing. From SpongeBob? No. All right, fair enough. <laughs> no. Keep it going. Pirates of the Caribbean. Ah. Dude, it's the Flying Dutchman. I got the Queen Anna's Revenge, I got the Black Pearl, and I just got the Silent Mary. The other big two ships are... Those all sound like really bad sexual positions. The Black Pearl. R. <laughs> right in her face. Well, I know what I'm making <laughs> when I get home. Um, dude, I've got graphs and diagrams and shit. It's crazy. Oh, that's the Like, I put in some, like, serious work into this Love shit. Love it. So, uh... Turn around and uh, the, they didn't make a, a Lego edition of the Flying Dutchman, and it pissed me off. So I started looking around for like makeshift people who have like done it, like how you can go on Etsy and like find like people like making shit. That's I, amazing. I found one. It's called the Lego Project Builder. Now check this out. The Flying Dutchman itself is over ten thousand pieces, guys. Like you're not going to see me for a week, but it's going to be the quietest week ever. Can you imagine? <laughs> I don't like that. Can you imagine like a week of just like no nukes going off? No. No, no fires getting started. No. Like the Columbine kid has officially put it down. He's not no. in the library. Like he's just chilling, building Legos. And he's so peaceful and quiet, just sipping on a juicy juice. I don't like that though. And some Jameson. There you go. Now we're getting talking. Um, <laughs> oh, and and the matter all. <laughs> Dude, dude, you have no idea. I'm suited! <laughs> oh, Zach, tell them about your terrible idea of what you mix together to stay awake. Oh, my God, guys, I've been mixing Monster and pre-workout together. Holy <laughs> shit, man! Dude, like, I had, like, uh, seven cups the other day. I didn't sleep. AKA. Like, like I tasted, I, I seen colors that weren't really there, and I ate gummy worms that tasted like fetuses. I'm not really sure what was going on, but my brain was just going. Really? Yeah, I have a, I have a serious sleep deprivation problem. You would have been so life. proud of me, though, on Saturday night. So I get the minion down, and I decided to go out. Now, you know, that the one of the ladies oh. who I fancied... You know, was busy with her friends. So I decided to go on out over to Smoking Joe's, watch the New Japan Pro Wrestling show live at a bar in front of a bunch of yo yo fucking muffins. Shout out to Onions. Shout out to freaking Onions and Triple M. Decided to start having shots. <laughs> so about five shots of Jameson later, a shot of Fireball, more Jameson, and some uh, Grey Goose and Cran. We decided to go live. Oh, fuck me. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah, it was fun. I started talking about sticking it in girls' asses, and I told some girl named Lexi when she got her self-esteem up to give me a call, and I'll let her look at it. Did you offer her a shot? No. Oh, okay. My liquor. <laughs> go away. <laughs> and, like, that. the funny part is, is that anybody who knows me knows I'm not a drinker. Not even a little bit. I don't pretend to be. I'm a solid B-plus in everything in life except for drinking. I decided to just let my hair down. I'm, I'm, get after it. I get bad with the drinking, man. Like, you do, but you know what? In in the short time that you and I yeah, boudoired together, if you will, um, you didn't drink that much. So you were you were a good panda. New Year's was horrible. Oh, boy. I, I do I do remember New Year's. New Year's this past year was horrible. <laughs> the New Year's before that, I got drunk with this one, and we started doing uh, – we did like a Ring of Fire edition of it. But w what we were doing was uh, we put the cup in the middle. We put like a Good six – like a Dixie cup, like 16 ounce empty in the middle. And what you had to do is every time you pulled an ace – somebody had to pour their drink into the cup and the last person to pull the ace not only had to pour like right his drink into the cup but then drink that cup okay oh. um you see now that i can't function like the three of you all all right that i can't function while drinking because i get very um i get touchy if you will like not like not like a salt charge touchy <laughs> But, like, throw wooden nickels at strippers and ask them if they have a gag reflex touchy. Ah. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big drinker, and granted, what most of us were drinking that night was Coke mixed with Fireball, which is a terrible combination. Ugh. Yeah, it's, it's not good. Yeah, until you start no. drinking. Um, so, meanwhile, they're all chug a luggin', and I'm, like, sipping, because the next day I had to take my baby cousin to Bush Gardens. So. I wasn't drinking hard, but when I do <clears throat> drink, which is not often, I'm the I love you drunk. 
I will give everyone. Oh, hugs, you're that person. And I want to sit in your lap and not do anything. Yeah, no, I was bad. You're I'm the lush. Person. I was mixing like Jaeger with Yingling at this point. Like I was so trashed, everything <laughs> just tasted like alcohol. So I was like, fuck it, why not? And I walked into the bathroom the next morning and I was just like Oh god, this is horrible. Like peppermint schnapps topped me off. I almost had Oh, Rupplemans. I almost made I like I almost did dirty things to a mermaid with HIV. Like there was Holy a, cow, man. <laughs> like there was <laughs> there was a lot of like dirty things that almost happened that I'm really happy that they didn't happen because my boy was there to have my back and be like, "Bro, don't do it." But I'm telling you, like <laughs> I just I want to let everybody know it didn't happen. I didn't do it. I didn't touch the scaly creature in the corner. I just simply kept drinking. Oh, man. So, all of this, I'm sleeping on the couch next to him. <laughs> I would like to have, like, a running notepad of over here, and we can call it, like, things Miller learns about Zach. <laughs> and I, like, the mermaids going on there, the fetus gummy worms are going on there that you know what fetus tastes like. Like, I just need, uh, we need to start. You... We need to start need a, a list. Yep. We need to put this to use next time that we all go drinking. We just need to just like start like hitting people with it. Or no, just sneak hey, up behind bam. them and get their back with so, it. So, oh my god, like that. We need to call Kai, and we all need to get fucked up, and we need to run around with the five pounder and just start hitting people with it. Sweetie, pick up your mouth. Yeah, it's not cute. I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> oh I mean, I, I do have a half a pack of Rolaids watching that, but. Yeah. You be careful. Flies will fly in that thing. I have like some rooflin. I can just. <laughs> Zach. Yeah. What? No. She, <sighs> I'm ch- I'm ch- she's so pretty when she sleeps. Be nice. <laughs> I want to sit here and like get drunk with like a bunch of people. And by a bunch of people, I mean like me and Zach and like a bunch of girls. And then we can run around and play. Guess who's in your mouth? It's not a horrible idea. I mean, I can chaperone, but I definitely don't want to participate. Ugh. You know what? That. You're going to guard the back door. Hey, everyone knows that when you get a group of drunk people, you want that chaperone because that's the person that's going to run out and get more soda. They're going to get pizza. They're everyone's favorite person. When Do you they have sex? Are you asexual? I definitely have sex. I'm not asexual. I'm okay. bisexual. All right. All right. Well, nobody's perfect. Um, for legal reasons, I don't want to be there. For, for for legal, I don't know what you guys get into. Uh, that was the so when you made your little live video. That's the first time I've ever seen him drunk. Oh yeah, man, that, it was fun. <laughs> and I made the mistake of clicking on the video, which I never look at any of his videos. And I happened to click on that one, and I see him going off. And all of a sudden, he's like, "What up to my girl Miller?" And I just did not say anything. I was yeah. silent the whole time, and I just watched the train. Choo choo! Okay. That motherfucker was leaving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm so glad that everybody had a good weekend. If you guys want to call in, call area code 941 358 5701. Tell me about your crazy weekend. If indeed you had said crazy weekend. I don't necessarily believe that you did, but if you did, you're more than welcome to call. If and you can top the mermaid and the dead feet as gummies. <laughs> Fuck me, man. Yeah. And on that note, we'll go to this week's Love It or Leave It. Are you stuck in a relationship? I'm in a glass case of emotion. Don't know what to do? She walks straight up to me yeah. and grabs me in the crotch. You've come to the right people. This one is kind of a hot topic. I could do this all day. It's time for Love It or Leave It. This week's Love It or Leave It has been brought to you in part by our very dear friend, Chelsea. Hi. Yeah, that yeah, that thing over there who chimes in, boy, when you don't think. Guys, I just got a Lego date. <sighs> That's Did you? amazing. Like, somebody just hit Why me up. Why can't I get, like, a Lego date? Somebody just, like, my boy. Damn just, it. My boy just hit me up and was like, hey, man, I don't know. Really- All right, so you have a Lego date with a guy? Hold on, hear me out. Well, okay, so his uh, his name's Edgar. It's the it's the guy who was oh, the, yeah muscle mechanic. Dude's fucking great. Like if you like my shoulder's been tore up and you've known that. Like he worked on my shoulder, was able to. Oh, by the way, look at this gnarly fucking bruise. I'm throwing clotheslines like you now. True. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. So uh, he just hit me up and he goes, "Hey man, so I don't really have a lot of video game systems, but I have like ten boxes of unopened Legos." And I'm like, "Oh, it's down." Like guys, I'm calling off of work. It's on like Donkey Kong. That's crazy. Um, 
Anyway, that uh, this week's Love It or Leave It is, can you still trust a friend after they've lied to you repeatedly? And more importantly, are there loopholes? Do they get that buffer? If they do something nice, like say a handful of nice things, <laughs> but they have a nasty little reputation of lying and things of that nature, do they get a pass? Do you call them out? Or is it nothing more than, you see that guy over there? It's a pathological fucking liar. But man, he throws great parties, so we just kind of go along with it until we have fun. For every three lies, you have to do one. For every three good deeds you do, you have to. You're able to do one lie. Is that how it works? That I don't mean? know. I don't know. I'm making shit up as I go here tonight, people. Come on. Um. Okay. Well, let's say that theoretically that that is the solution, and that is uh, the standard, if you will. How many good deeds have you done, Chels? <laughs> don't ask me. <laughs> I'm generally the type of person nose where, nose. you know, when I was younger, no I really learned that I got bit in the ass hard by lying and, you know, learned my lesson from there on out. And I, I generally don't like lying at all. So when someone lies to me, I'm like, okay, I get it. That's fine. But on a repetitive basis, that's where I start to draw the line. Like, I feel really bad for not helping you out when you need help, but I don't trust you. Okay, you fair enough. Fr- uh, fun with a friend you don't trust. That's a pretty fair point. That's a one night stand. Uh, friend. Nice. Um. Oh. Uh, oh yes, those. Um mermaids. <laughs> uh what about you, Miller? I don't think it's lying. I think it is <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> slight bending of the truth. It is, is strategically releasing or not releasing certain bits of information. Example. Example. Like, yes. Or let's just or let's just um you know strategically say it, it would be an example because I don't want to put yourself out there. No, it's it's not me. Like we have a girlfriend who um is lies in, a lot. No, she's hooking up with this guy, but she doesn't want any of us to know. Too late. So we'll make plans, and she'll say, "Oh yeah, I'll meet you guys out in twenty minutes." Mm. Ah, knowing damn good and well that she ain't showing up in twenty minutes. Right, so we're like, okay, we're here, and then an hour and a half later, oh, I'm I'm leaving my house now. Traffic was, so and then one thirty in the morning, you guys still out, and uh, well, the bar is closed in a half an hour. I don't know what to tell you, <laughs> but and I've done the same. You know, it's you're not lying. Um, a few people we have. Um, who is Katie? Said, um. It's called just being shady. Kate. Whatever. That is my girl. What, what up, Kate? Um, lying is lying. I mean, that you can call it anything you'd like. You can gussy it up any way you'd like. You can call it lying, stretching the truth, being shady, fake, whatever, false love, Drake, whatever. It's still wrong, and when is enough enough to where you finally put your goddamn foot down and say, look, fuckface, I'm sick of you lying to me. I know this. I know that. You're a bad person. It was so hot the other day. I almost called my ex because I needed something shady to hide under. <laughs> I read that. As as well as the 37 other people who posted that. Right. Fuck them. I know, right? <laughs> but Kate makes a good point. You just stop getting invited out. Like There is that, yeah. But you, I, I have a two-time really? rule. I have a two-time rule. But do they really do they really get no longer invited because yes. what if they're the only fun one in the real group it, no if it's if it's our girlfriends especially i don't know if it's as you get older you value your girlfriends more in those relationships with your girlfriends so if it's in our group of girlfriends you have a two time rule and i've been right. called out on the two time rule my oh. girlfriends have told me look you're not putting in what we're putting in we don't invite you anymore because you got asked once you got asked twice you didn't come out you're done you're not putting so out there's the two time rule I need to enforce the two-time rule in my dating life. Thanks, there Kate. Go. There you go. Kate said I'm the fun one. She, well, Kate, thanks. Uh-huh. Lies. <laughs> there's also the thing, like, say someone, a friend is getting shifty on you, and they come up to you and say, hey, here's the situation. I'm really sorry. I know you're going to get mad about this, but here it is. Could you respect that, or would you prefer they lie to you to save your feelings? Hmm. And at that point, is the lie still something that would ruin the friendship or something that you could eventually forgive? You see now, like that, I'm one of those type of people where it does me no good to lie. Exactly. So I would rather just be a dick about it and say, hey, being honest, which inadvertently gets me around being a dick and being <laughs> called a dick because I'm being honest. 
I'd rather have someone say, hey, I know this is going to make you mad, but out of respect for our friendship, this is what it is. I mean, at least at the very least, I could respect them then. I'm under the don't ask, don't tell. Policy. Ah, the military. <laughs> like, good I call. I the fifth. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, that's where I'm at. Mm. Um, you didn't ask me about this. And, you're right. And when they do ask, I'm, like, very specific in, like, the questions that I ask, like, in return. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that movie, I, Robot. You did not ask the right question. Yeah, like. So we'll keep dancing around this until you ask the right question, and then gonna, I'll give you the answer. We're going to keep going around this. Yeah. Like, I'm going to give you tidbits here and there, but I'm not willing to tell you my whole story yet. <laughs> like, I need to know how much you know already. I do not look like a horrible liar, Jess. Don't say those nasty things about me on Facebook. I am a bad liar, though, but. Case in point, let's say because in this day and age of society, 90% of women, all their friends are guys. Absolute horse shit on my, you know, I will remind each and every one of you. That is absolute horse shit. I'm sorry, Zach, we can't be friends. How many of them? Okay, bye. Right. Well, that the reason why I say it is because 90% of the girls who have guy friends, they've probably done stuff with them. Or they are waiting for that for that opportune moment, or the guy is waiting for the kink in the armor to make his move. Look, I don't get along with females. They serve a handful of purposes with me. Make me food, pleasure my lower region, and hopefully you're not horrible to interact with. That's your prerogative, but would you want Minion to meet somebody like that? Guess what? Minion, I'm hoping for a lesbian. <laughs> And Minion is 10. So we don't have to worry about that. Not until she's 30. Yes. I'm locking mine up in a Lego base. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. I I don't go for the men and women being friends thing. She's like, I think there is lies and manipulation that keep it moving to keep it all circulating till one day somebody slips, falls, and falls on their, their guy friend's penis. Slip? Fell, landed on his dick. That's Sh right. Shoot them both, Grady. Where's yep. your gun at? Sorry. Bam, and Miller's co-signing. I'm the odd co I can accept that. Okay. How many guy friends do you have? Including the ones that live in Connecticut? <laughs> we'll shrink it down to Florida. I have, like, three friends in Florida, so one. Okay. How many of them have you fucked? One. See? But that was also... I win! Past. Over a 10-year relationship where you can have something with someone and then realize you're a better A real off friend way. would never, would never jeopardize it. So you mean to tell me. I've also hooked up with my girlfriends. A real They're not real girlfriends right. either. A real friend would want to know how you're feeling on the inside and out. <laughs> yeah. Want to know how you're feeling. <laughs> like, I just... I'm sorry, I have. I found a toy for that today. <laughs> <laughs> Good I call. Have perfectly healthy relationships because I'm very communicative. I let people know sure. where my bounds are. I know, let them know exactly where the relationship stands, and that's how I function. I mean, your boundaries involve the word banana. No. Bone. Banana. Banana. It's just the point that because I am where I am and who I am as a person, if I couldn't be friends with anyone I was sexually attracted to, I would have zero friends. So Good call. I have to set up the boundaries that, hey, this is where we are and this is, you know, territory we're not going to go into. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Zach, uh, what do you feel on the whole lying thing and the girls and all that other fun stuff and the guys manipulating their way into the hearts and by hearts, I mean vagina? And... <laughs> All right. Uh, I've lied. I'm not going to – I won't front about that. I think we all have at some point. In our Good life. honesty. You know what I mean? Um, at one point, I was a pathological liar. Lied about the dumbest shit in the world. Was up front about some real serious shit. Like if it came right. down to, you know, if, if it was like top of the list, like priority, like sure. this. Sure. No, I'll be honest. Okay. Dumb shit, dumb shit I'll lie about all day. All I don't right. know why. I just do it. Like – I can respect that. Little that, shit. Yeah, did, I mean, that's Did you touch honesty. this? No, you're touching it right now. That's not fucking me. Like, <laughs> sorry, I didn't do it. Did, did you, you break call? this? No, I, I didn't do that. <laughs> no, I didn't know. I don't know who like, did that. Why are your fingerprints all over it, Zach? I don't know. Why is it I don't know. semen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. It's not my fault. The apple pie looked delicious. Anyways, so, um. escalated quickly. Yeah, so does most things. Um. 
No is the new yes. <laughs> so nah. that's rapey. Um, yeah. So I've lied um, about dumb shit before. Sure. Um, as far as to like lie about to a girl to get into their pants, like a like manipulation on feelings and shit. Like I can manipulate any situation, but I manipulate it to the point where I don't look like the bad guy. Like, and let's be honest, any guy who has said they've never done it, they're full of shit. Not to discredit you guys, because I'm sure your game is impeccable. But I would like to put it out there that, that I think females have made it way too easy yeah. nowadays. Well, yeah. But Not that, that you guys have a great game. Yeah, but or, let's call it for what it is. Five years ago, name one man who would openly admit that. Nobody. Even today, people do not admit. They're like, yeah, you know what? I can lie with the best of them. I yeah, I just think girls are kind of... Slutty, I putting guess. it out there for on everybody. Your own team. I think girls are willing to look believe. at her. She's like hitting on the old team. She's hating on her own team. I think girls are willing to believe anything that they're willing to hear because most of the time people don't actually talk to them like they're a person. Sure, right. So the reason I'm hating on my own team though is because you lose a lot of guys to the girls that are putting it out there so quickly. Are those so, the quality of guys you'd want though? But at the time, you don't know that, do you? I mean, overall quality is kind of... Quality over quantity. Quantity. But the only way you can really meet people is if you go out with a lot of people. Uh, Not that type of quantity. Not uh, BBW quantity. I was like, quantity? No, but I definitely definitely agree with that. Um, There are are a, a handful of girls, and I will be honest... And I will stick to this till the day that I'm fucking dead. I have almost 3,000 people on my freaking Facebook friends list, and there is two handfuls of people I would fuck. Rest of them, no, because I've seen what's been through you, and I'm good without that. And they don't meet the dating flowchart recommendations and or standards. You have a flowchart? I do have a flowchart, and you're a part of my flowchart, buddy. I am a part of the flowchart. I wonder if I have my flowchart with me. I, uh... Is it in your car? Oh, proceed. <laughs> I uh, I don't have a flow chart. Um, Everybody should have a flow chart. Most of the time, I, I know exactly what I'm looking for. So if it's... Found it! This motherfucker has a flow chart. I do. If, and Zach's on it. If, uh, if it comes oh, yeah. down to... If I'm looking to just get laid, like that's the end game, right then and there. And I'll tell you about it. I won't tell you about my personal life. I won't. I won't exchange any information that isn't publicly known already. Like I'm not going to tell you my backstory. I'm not going to tell you who I am, what I'm into, what I like. Like I'm not going to share like little interesting, fucking funny stories with you. Like I don't care. I don't care if you like me. I don't. You know what I mean? Because I know what I'm going to get at the end of the day. But if I'm actually willing to spend the time and put it in, and, ah, I see what you did. Ah, right there. But no, if I'm actually willing to spit like invest myself into you sure then i try to just be open and honest and all the way to the fullest like everything out on the table makes sense i guess it just depends on the situation on how much i'm willing to really give you question three involves zach on my dating flow chart god damn it (laughs) it says have you fucked any of my brothers dot 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 especially zach (laughs) especially and then it goes into sub questions like there's no okay move on to the next question. Yes. Bye, bitch, eat a dick. Aww. Option two. Does head count? <laughs> Bye, bitch, eat a dick. <laughs> and because this is a popular one, I haven't done anything, but I've sent pictures. Bye, bitch, eat a dick. <laughs> no, I don't want to stick my sword. And I got into a three-hour conversation with somebody justifying... The fact that they had done things with with a brother who will remain nameless and said, I never would have given them a chance had they been honest and said that they did acts of inadequacy with my brother. And I said, you're right, I wouldn't have. Honesty is the best policy. It's always the best policy. I mean, it might make people mad at you, but at the end of the day, no one's going to say that you're fake. So as long as you're up front. Guys, I would just like to share with the public information. Um, 
it's not the fact that I have anything like super crazy or anything like that that Johnny doesn't want to have sex with these girls. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I want to. It's share a that. mental I thing. Want, I want to share that with the. I want to share that with the population. Like I don't have AIDS or anything. It's a mental <laughs> thing. That's all it is, America. Like we're good. I can. Show I you papers. I don't think Zachary has the clap. I don't think he's got the fire from down under. I don't think he's got any of that. It's just for me, it's weird. Like, you know. <laughs> And we can't use touchy as an excuse because I've seen the women he sticks his penis in, and frankly, no thank you. Um, But Joey, no. You know, same thing. No. No, I don't want anything to do with any girl who has been around, you know, or has done things with Zach or Joey because those are the only two brothers who probably get around. Um, Or I did at one point in time. Joey don't get around no more because he's married. God bless him for that. JoJo is married. He is. But if... If Brittany ever said, hey, what's up? Uh, first words out of my mouth, what do you want? What do you need, lady? Where's Joe? Is Joe hurt? <laughs> He's not hurt. <laughs> so, but yes, I will scan my dating flow chart and put it on. And I'm so happy because it does ask the question if they suck dick. So I'm happy about that. Okay. But also like. I used to have I mean, a uh, one night stand application. You had an application. Good. I actually used to hand it out to people. Man, that's, that's good. That's so wrong. I'm, I'm <laughs> Says you. <laughs> I, I'm a big like. I mean, people will always have skeletons in their closet. They're trying to hide, but I mean, I understand your because I mean, you interact with your brothers every day, not wanting yeah. to cross that line. But I'm saying, people in their past, Swords. yeah, someone may have you know done stuff in their past they're not proud of, but you shouldn't judge their current character based on that. People are very capable of change. Absolutely, no, they're not. I'm just going to point out that <laughs> I in, like to see the best in everyone. In the Ghostbusters movie, they specifically said, "Do not cross." streams do not cross beams yep that's that's it however at the very end of it they said cross the beam so i'm not really sure <laughs> like there's, there's, there's a mixed message in there like i was like yeah i follow <laughs> wait you're doing what oh it's what? more powerful oh, oh no Yes, the confidentiality agreement is always key in that one. Fusion ha, fuck bitches. And on that note, we are going to take our first break. When we come back, I will go into great and extensive detail about how millennials are nothing more than a bunch of fascist dicks. Ooh. I love that. That sounds good. (laughs) It's a villain's gospel. Myself, the co-pilot, Zach. Columbine. Miller. (laughs) Chelsea. Hey. hey. That's right. Go get your Funyuns. Go get your Doritos. Come back. Because we've got more of a villain's gospel. Look how Sir Parker gets so loud. I know. He just also I'm like, ah! Yo, what's good? It's your boy K Soul. And I'm here to welcome you back to a villain's gospel with your host, Johnny Christ, the super villain. Alongside with Zach, the friendly Caliban kid, and Uncle Touchy. And uh, you just don't want to know where he got that name from. You never know what's going to come out of their mouth. They're like children. All right, guys, we're back on a villain's gospel, doing it on up. So what we are going to do now is we are going to uh, up the ante a little bit, and we're going to go into this week's get the most little truth, unfiltered three minutes of your life. I'll answer the question. It's truth in three minutes. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. All right, this week's. Truth in three minutes, although it'll probably go way longer than three minutes, is why are millennials whiny little bitches? Whiny little... Wah. I want equal rights. I want to be treated equally. Okay, well, quit doing stupid-ass shit to where you get ejected as being looked at as somebody of equality. What do you mean this sounds off? Is it? Yeah, we're not... We are now. Oh, we're on? Yep. You got the sound off? It happens. Okay. <laughs> My it, bad. Freaking everybody like shits themselves. Like freaking like poor Chelsea's like. <laughs> I'm good. I can sign. So. <laughs> she what? Can... Yeah. Yeah, I know. So moving on. Why are millennials such whiny little bitches? Like, can somebody please explain this to me? If everybody 
on the planet only sits there and bitches and complains about how they want to be treated equally, why the constant need to be different? If you want to be equal, you have to act in a relative state of equality. You can't run around showing your ass because everybody wants to be equal, but yet everybody wants to be different. If you could, what is the cutoff year for millennials? According to Google, it starts at 85 and goes to 2004. Thank you. Just so we can clarify for everyone watching. Yes, because let's be honest. How many of us sit around and we listen to the same nonsense repetitively? The same nonsense of, I'm not being treated fairly. Okay, well, that sounds horrible. Anybody ever stop to think, okay, well, what did you do? What are you doing to help perpetuate this situation? Are you playing ball? Are you are you allowing yourself to be every bit as good and as qualified as the next human being? I don't believe so. You playing victim? Bam. The millennials are AKA victims. Victimizers. To quote the crow, victims, aren't we all? And that's exactly what it is. Um uh, case in point. Like, I am all in favor of parades and nonsense and things like that, but how does that help? How does that help? Really? Marches help. I think pra uh, parades are more of a way to wear raise awareness and let them at least know that they can express themselves in that field and that they're protected to express themselves in that place. Okay, but aren't there... Aren't there enough things going on right now to where people are not being ostracized anymore? You know, homosexuals wanted um, gay marriage. They got it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Stop parading. Well, Be a working, contributing member of society. A parade, in definition, is a celebration. They can just be celebrating who they are, and don't we need it? Like, I mean, it's nice to have a reason just to be happy and celebrate. Hell, we do it every time we have a holiday. That's not really an American thing, but we steal it and do it anyway. Can I have a parade because I like blondes who suck dick? You could. But do I get one? You, if you organized it. But do I get one, though? I don't know. Who's organizing it? Not me. <laughs> not me. All right, so in theoretics... I don't get one, do I, Zach? I don't get a parade because I like blondes who love sucking dick. Uh, I feel discriminated against. Hugh Hefner might. I feel discriminated against. I feel like you all are attacking me because I want a parade that highlights the oral report of a female with blonde hair. Well, sir, you're going to have to work to make that happen. That's bullshit. If Jesse Jackson can make things happen, <laughs> I can damn sure make it happen. Martin Luther King had a dream, and that followed through perfectly. Those were marches. <clears throat> it was okay, dream. this is the difference between that time of error oh, shit. and now. I apologize. Straight up. But, but before I make that point, Color, you're live on A Villain's Gospel. What up, buddy? It's Captain. Hey, what's going on, Captain? How are you, sir? Very good. Good man. That um, do you believe that n that the majority of the millennials nowadays are nothing but whining little bitches who don't want to play enough ball? Hence, when they don't get their way, they boo hoo. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, myself have done it before. You know, it's just part of you know going through life or whatever. Sure. But when I heard that my actual you know year I was born was in that, I was like. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, brother. <laughs> you know, I mean, hey, I just don't identify that way. You know? Yeah, but that uh, you have also I called know. into the show, and no known fact about um, Captain is Captain it, Captain is a supporting anarchist, and it's not what you think. No, anarchy does not mean chaos. But at 18, I also did not live with my parents. Fair point. You know, and that's like a, the common thing that I've seen with what I identify as millennials. Like, I don't identify that way. Sure. But I get the, um, like, the plight feeling. Right. Of the baby boomers. Oh. Like, dude, made poor investments, made poor housing market, you know, 
subsidies they just built, built, built with nobody buying. You know? Sure. So like when there's like capitalism is the only way for a poor person to make it to middle class. Okay, I mean, but, and that's a fair point. But, right now, listen. So if there is, it's supply and demand, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if your supply goes over your demand, you will tank the system. I mean, it's just like anything else. Case in point, what's going on in Seattle right now? If your demand overseeds your supply, you're going to, you know, people are going to starve to death. Absolutely. And that's a great point. Uh, Miller, that uh, you look like that you want to say something, and you're being so good about this. Uh, What's up? Uh, What's on your mind, kid? No, I I agree with you. I'm right there with you. I was shocked when I found out that I was born in the same millennial year span that they're talking. Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> but it's just not how I was raised. Sure. I think, you know, the best thing my parents gave me was my work ethic. Right. And to me, what distinguishes millennials from maybe those of us that don't identify is really our work ethic is what it comes down to. Oh, I agree with that. I totally agree with that because I'm like, no, you know, no kidding. As soon as I was, you know, acting out at school and getting suspended or something like that. Right. My dad was not going to give me a free day at home. He was like, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be in school. You're going to come learn trade. Now that's a pretty fair point. And that's when you I know, learned how to lie to people. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that beginning. Same, that same work ethic also was, you know, my allowance. My, right. You know, what bought me my skateboards or guitars or whatever. Sure. You know, but when I got punished, I didn't get paid for that work. That was punishment. Yeah. I think you have a lot of, a lot of pussy parents running around who don't, who don't want to sit here and... They would they would rather be their kid's friend than their parents. No. No. Hey, and you said it so good right there. Pussy parents. Oh yeah. Because I'm not I'm not kidding. Like, you know that do you remember like going through puberty where that like that testosterone just finally took over and you tried to alpha up to your dad? Oh, Yeah. The was- one and only time I ever did that to my father, God rest his soul, put me through a wall. Yeah. But dude, mine fucking, I mean, just right in the stomach and help me. <laughs> like, I didn't want to do that, but you're going to learn today, boy. <laughs> See, I never had that justifying moment because, you know, my dad liked to play this really awesome game called Hide and Seek. Where, <laughs> Jesus, you know, man. he's really good. I'm still oh. looking for him. <laughs> like, oh. holy shit, dude. He said, hey, we're going to play Hide and Seek one day. I said, okay. He said, go to the corner, count to ten. I turn around. Hey, and that's that's another thing, dude. My parents are still together. Fuck how many you know. how many people that you know that your parents are still together or or you know, our age that are still with the baby mama and baby daddy. I'm surprised and when a relationship lasts more than a month. All that's right? a, like, yeah, yeah. My phone gets more life and battery than most relationships nowadays. Which is weird because mine dies halfway through the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a matter of wanting to work for it, which a lot of people, once the excitement dies down, they're done. And that's a very fair point indeed. Uh, Captain, thank you so much, man, for calling in. I do appreciate it, man. It's always good to hear from you. Hey, great show as always, guys. Thank you so very much, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Can I fit my tongue in this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Although, fair I'm point, stuck. if you look at uh, Time Magazine, a couple years ago, they released the cover saying the me, me, me generation. Oh, yeah. And it seems like the older generations always like to pick on the newer one. You go back to, and I, I don't remember the year, but it was either 1970 or 1980, and they were complaining about that generation because they had the uh, video cameras had just come out and other things, and they were saying this was going to be a self-obsessed, shallow, lazy generation obsessed with only filming themselves. And I mean, that does sound a little familiar, does it not? Oh, well, absolutely. And I couldn't agree more. But my question, again, will always go back to the whole, okay, why justify that? Why sit here and throw your hands on up in the air? Like, case in point. All right, that when our president got elected, the uproar, 
50% of Americans didn't even fucking vote. But yet those people who didn't vote are the first ones in the street huffing and puffing and pouting and pouting and slamming their hands, hoping to get their way. Newsflash. And this is why a lot of the millennials are fucking morons. Because... They would realize that when Zach brought up the Martin Luther King thing, guess what? They did it, but they did it in a fashion that was within the rules. Peaceful That's protest. the difference. Yeah, peaceful protest. Protesting counts if your rights have been violated. Protesting doesn't work if you don't, you know, just because you didn't get your way. My parents always told me, if you don't vote, you don't get to complain. It's as simple as that. And Miller said that uh, this week. Mm-hmm. Case in point, you want change, you know, which, you know, which I didn't believe it at first, but then after I sat down and thought about it, like, well, it makes a lot of sense. You want change. It starts at the lower level. It starts at a city level, starts at a county level. You know, mm -hmm. you vote from there and you put hopefully the right people up there and go into office. I just know that if I had a blog that was, you know, the Caucasian blog, the straight <laughs> blog. Oh, I'd be labeled everything under the fucking sun. You would, dude. When we did the uh, when we did the segment on the Muslims and all that, and I said that yeah. everybody needs to get deported, I got called a fucking terrorist, a bigot. I was told that I was racist. Like my inbox. Well, blew Muslims up. not a race, so whoever called you that is a <laughs> fucking idiot. And I was just like, I I can't even. Like I didn't even acknowledge half the shit that was said to me. But yeah, dude, I I was blown up with a bunch of different shit, all because of my personal opinion about a certain situation. And there's nothing wrong with having that but we can't sit there and be ignorant to the fact of everything that's going on if people want change okay um and and case in pay um or that uh case in point now i know that zach does this now but there was a time when he didn't it's like i know that i know like people like zach who have to work twice as hard because of the fact he looks different, it's like, you know, and let's call a spade a spade because he's sat there and he's told everybody many times he shows up late to work. He doesn't show up late anymore. He shows up early now. He does the right thing. He does what you're supposed to because you have to because they're already going to look at him as fucked up because the man's got madhouse on his face. So he's got to work twice as hard as everybody else. Look at a guy like Zuck. Zuck doesn't have face tattoos. He's a clean-cut, good-looking guy. Oh, Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry that oh, right. we don't have a personal relationship with Zuck. <laughs> My bad. That's that's your homeboy. Sorry. <laughs> no, look at a guy like that, okay? So when you're talking about millennials, you have these guys where, where I think the baby boomers and a lot of people get sour is you do have this group of millennials who sure. they found ways to do things better. Sure. And... I think a lot of people then ride those coattails and say, you know, he did this. He came out with this. I'm going to ride those coattails. I shouldn't have to work this hard. I should be able to work from home. I should be able to do this, that, and the other. And I think there's a lot of people that ride those coattails, but they're not willing to work at the level that some of these guys have worked to be able to retire at and 30 I years old. I completely agree, yes. And I think that's what kind of feeds this, the negative connotation that we get from millennials this lazy entitled sure kind of generation and i mean i work in tech so i see it and there's a lot of people that get called out for the whole millennial thing but all comes down to work ethic mm -hmm. how much are you willing to put in to get where you want to get that's a pretty fair point. I, uh, that's extremely fair. No, and that's a, that's an amazing point, actually. Um, I had a shitty work ethic for a while. Sure. Um, you know what I mean? I was like, whatever. I'll fucking I'll do what I want. Um, and this is before all the tattoos and shit. You know what I mean? Right. Um, it took me to and and when I say like I'm an addictive person, like I'm an addict. If I once I find something and I got it, I'm like, we're gonna do it. and We're gonna go all the way out. But um. I was I was floating in and out of jobs. I didn't really care. I was like, whatever, I'll, I'll just get another one. Like, fuck it, you know? Right. Oh, they want me to do this. Well, that's not really what I want to do. You know what I mean? You were just, uh, I was a fucking baby about the shit. And uh, one day I just, I woke up and I was like, I'm going to go do something with my life. And um, 
Good shit, though. I started uh, I started working at a just like a little simple like kiosk in the mall selling piercing shit. I remember those days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, that was a good time. And then I turned around and uh, I actually sold body jewelry to the manager at GameStop who liked the way that I approached her, turned around and offered me a job there. So next thing I know, like I'm working at the kiosk, I'm working at GameStop. Next thing you know, I'm working at FYE and Spencer's like – I'm walking into work at nine in the morning at Edison Mall, and I'm staying until almost eleven, twelve o'clock at night because I'm I'm transferring between jobs throughout the yeah. whole day. You know what I mean? And um, I uh, I didn't really like learn my work ethic through my own father because you know awesome hide and seek skills. <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean? My stepdad uh, is is a monster when it comes down to it. Like I've seen him work in the rain. I've seen him work when he's six. Dude. Oh, Robbie? Dude, He's an animal, man. man. Dude wakes up at, you know, 5.30 almost every Does morning. he sleep? Like, is he one of those, like, nocturnal people that sleeps in five-minute increments? No, nah, dude. Good like, for all day. He, he'll, he'll get home um, after working. Like, dude's in construction in, like, Florida heat, man. You know what I mean? And he's not getting home until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. Going to work at, you know, 6.37. Sure. And then turning around, he comes home just long enough to be able to lay down um, or not even lay down, but like take a shower, eat dinner and and play with Eddie on whatever Eddie's doing and maybe watch a little bit of TV before he goes up to his mom's bar and helps her clean it. And then he comes home. He'll be up for just a little bit longer. And normally around like 1130, he'll he'll pass out and wake up and do it all over again every right. single day you know what i mean um this past sunday actually dude went to work like his day his one day off his one day off and he's he's out there and he's in the sun and he's just busting his ass dude and so like i i learned to appreciate the the work ethic watching him do that and that's what made me get to the point where i was like fuck this like i'm not just gonna work one i'm gonna work i'm gonna work as much as i can sure and yeah. it keeps me out of trouble, you know. And that was one of the few things that my, um, I believe it was my uncle, oh, always, um, oh, always told me because I would always bitch when I was in my early twenties about how I don't have the good relationship with my family as we used to way back in the day. And um, he looked at me and he said, "That's because you don't fucking get it." He said, "The way I built my relationship." With the rest of the family as I grabbed a shovel and I was right there next to him shoveling you know and and making things and helping out around you know grandma's house and things like that that's how I built the relationship with my family and that's how I, I got the respect and there are a lot of people who that they want that easy way out you know mm-hmm. I mean I, I I've been there I have been there I was I still get labeled as a shitty work ethical person but you know and i kind of take a brother gill's approach on it you know that people pay me to work if if they're gonna pay me to think they don't have enough money and i'm proving that because it's like regardless i mean i missed out on a lot of good bonding time with the brothers because i was so I, I was so into the strip club game because I was there open to close seven days a week. It didn't matter if that club was open or not. I needed to make sure that everything went smooth because that was my ass. And they were paying me really good. So, I mean, I missed a lot of wrestling. I took a lot of time away from wrestling. Yeah. You know, that because of that, I took time away from, you know, that Zach's kid being born, you know, instead of me being there like I would have wanted to. I mean, I put, I put that career first because i knew somebody like me who's got a record it's hard it's not the hardest thing in the world and people are more forgiving today than they've ever been but there was a long time where like when the economy went to shit if you had a felon and then you had five other people behind them who weren't equally as qualified but they didn't have a record chances are they might get it before me and that was always something that you know that was part of the world so i had to be able to try to offer something that the others can't and that's something you know that i know that miller deals with in her job because i know that you're good at your job i can only assume that you're good at your job if not then we'll see you on the unemployment line soon <laughs> I love my job. and i know that you are exceptionally good at your, at at what you do 
So it's just that it's just really hard because a few bad apples spoil the bunch. That's absolutely true. And that is exactly what it is. Miller, what you got? So when we're interviewing for a position, one of the first things we look at, especially in this with all the like we're talking about with millennials is one of the first things I'll look at on a resume is, you know, we look at what the person did, but then we ask them how many different things they were doing. So, and what we're trying to figure out is how many things could you balance at once and do well? Sure. So were you, did you do volunteer work? Did you do, were you involved in a number of organizations? And we'll look at, you know, did you take care of your siblings? And we'll let someone kind of explain all the things that they did and could they do them all and could they do them all well? And those are the kinds of people that we look to bring in. So it doesn't really matter what your past was or what well, your sure. history is. We can teach you to do anything. Okay, but are you telling me that that never played a factor? I can't say that it's never played a factor because I okay. haven't interviewed everyone. But I can tell you the first and foremost thing that we've always looked at is – how many things can somebody balance and could they do them all well? And we have hired people that most people wouldn't hire because of that versus people who were like, they only did one thing. I can sign right? my name. And it's right. all about, you know, one thing the millennials have brought to the table, and I'll say that again, is they work smart, not hard. It's not about how hard you work. It's about working smart. And that's how we got Facebook. Sure. That's hard work. That's how you got self, Snapchat. Though. Snapchat. <laughs> Boy, that I would have loved to have been on the on on the brink of that one. I should have yeah. invented Snapchat. How many things do you see out there that somebody invented and you're like, "What? That's easy I should have happen. done that. I've been doing that forever." Instagram Throwing for my example. name on it. Oh, you see now what do we think is the next evolution in the social media chain? Do you think we'll ever see something that will take the place of Facebook? Inevitably. Like when, or yeah, Facebook, when like Facebook killed MySpace, yeah, like did. crushed it. I, I think that, you know what I mean? You look at, you look at MySpace, Facebook, and then after that, what came It was Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know I mean, and, and Twitter tried thing. to, but Facebook is always updating to the point where, you well, know, the only thing that I wish Facebook could do is if, like, we could live stream. So, say, like, you're here and I'm down in Fort Myers. We could do a, a co-live stream thing together where... They're doing it. I have seen it on White Chocolate's live videos where she will call somebody while on live and FaceTime it and, you know, and that little weird child who ends up hanging out with her is right there in the corner. I'm like... These sons of bitches have really got something. I don't know I what they have. Curve. So now I don't have to drive to do pit buddies anymore. <laughs> Yay! Oh, man. Joey's going to be so mad. Joey's going to be like, you son of a bitch. It's inevitable, though, because when MySpace was the thing, no one thought that social media could advance past that. And then Facebook became, and we kind of slowly trickled over that. But once Facebook became a staple, that was a thing. And when Twitter and Instagram started to pop up more, Facebook adjusted. They've got stories now, this, that, and the other. So either something's going to completely encompass Facebook or Facebook will adapt to the changes. But it's inevitable that change will come in one form or another. I think the next big thing you're going to see is Facebook is going to start incorporating digital currency. And if you haven't seen it already, there are ads already for credit cards where you can just use Q your, Q your QR code. Like There are a lot of countries that have transitioned completely to digital currency. And I wouldn't be surprised if that is where Facebook is looking to go next. So now they've got over 70% like, of the internet cookied. So they know where you're going, what you're doing. Right. I would not be surprised if currency is the next move for Facebook. And then you are making your purchases through them, which makes the retargeting. I mean, it's just going to become one giant ad social space. Ooh, why do I feel like That's that? We're all going to be screwed. I don't know. I mean, Claire Cookies, go incognito. I, I, like, I like the dollar. I I like something in my hand. I I I can't throw electronic currency at strippers. I just know that I can't until there's a way where I can swipe my credit card through their ass and I'll get charged at the end of the month. 
But how entertaining would it be if, like, you swiped your credit card and you got those little Mario coins and you just threw them at them? Oh, my <laughs> Bitcoin. God. Bitcoin. Can that be a thing? <laughs> Bitcoin. Is that a thing? Like, can that be something where we get, that like, a level up coin? <laughs> where we're just, like, throwing things at, like, You just randoms. scan her QR code. They could just get them, like, tattooed on their ankles or on their little shoes and just scan that QR code and the send la- the funds over. And the, the pixels just... First. Oh, the last time a bunch of people got numbers tattooed onto them, oh, yeah, no. that, yeah, it didn't end well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true, though. <laughs> just point sound, out a fact. Like, general right. sound of dissent. Everyone's like, "Oh God, please don't go there." Zach, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. I'm like, nah. Oh. I mean, um, and like, I get what everybody's saying, but the whole point that I was trying to make way back in the beginning is the fact that if. If all these different groups and people, they all want to be treated seriously and they all want to be treated equal, why act like a child? Because why jump up and down and say, I want attention because I'm not getting enough attention. So let me throw my hands up in the air and jingle the little freaking silver ball so everybody can be like, oh... Molly doesn't feel like a complete human being because today Molly's identifying with a fucking hippopotamus. Can you do that? Fat Molly. Oh, damn. (laughs) (laughs) But I think it's back to what Miller was saying earlier. It's how your parents raised you. We've got a generation of kids now that an iPad is raising them, like Zach was saying earlier. Oh, fuck yeah, they are. And that's that instant gratification now. I mean, we do have baby boomers screaming because their 35 cent off coupon isn't working but then you have a bunch of kids who when they don't get instant gratification on the job market or with their grades or you know they go to college they don't study and then they whine because they never had to study in uh, high school it's all how the parents raised you if your parents raised you to believe that you get in what you put out you're i'm fine. surprised we don't have um uh, you know like more drug addicts with that type of mentality I mean, heroin overdoses are at an all-time high. Especially in Bradenton. So, I mean, there is that. I swear, like, that, um, I believe one of the news sources in Orlando did a poll, and Bradenton ranked number one in the highest of heroin overdoses. Mm -hmm. Good job, Bradenton. You have no fucking self-standards. Like, what is the matter with this town? People are either getting shot or they're ODing. I mean, it's not much better in Fort Myers. You're either old or making stupid decisions. Yeah, but yeah, but Fort Myers had how to catch a predator. Now that was funny as fuck. <laughs> dude, dude. No, dude. no, no. Dude. So check this out. Okay, checking it. So when I was working at the body jewelry place. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. So when I was working at the body jewelry place, uh-huh. um, I worked for this uh, very cheap little uh jewish man okay oh yeah freaking everybody knows that jews hold on to their money so um very cheap little dude he had a point man in charge almost like a district like he if he was the ceo of said jewelry kiosk um call. he would have a he had like a district who would like go and like check on like the beach shop and then the mall shop and da 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 da, da. his name was shin um, okay s- yeah <gasps> shin chin chin Chen? Oh. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. There's probably more to that, but at the same point in time... Like, that wasn't like Schindler's List, was it? That's, that's where, I, where al- I thought you were going. That's where I always... That's, <laughs> Again. No, no, no. That's what I always like pictured because that's how he acted. However... Right. Um, so when the Fort Myers did the How to Catch a Predator thing, that motherfucker was on the video. He was on the list. Like, they showed him walking up to said house and then, ta- like, the... Like, the girl being like, I'm in here, door's unlocked. And he makes it up to the door, and as he opens it, SWAT just bum-rushed him, dude. The dude you know ended up getting freaking hit? Yeah, dude. The the one dude who I was just like, man, if something horrible could ever happen to this guy, I wouldn't even be mad at it. Two days later. That's amazing. Boom. And I was like, I'm not even mad at it. (laughs) That is... That's the best thing on the planet. Like, who would have thought that the one time you actually curse somebody, that something bad would happen? Something bad actually happens. I thought no, I had... no, they made the bad thing happen to themselves. Who knows? I thought that I had that power, though. Like, yeah, but you know what? What is? But let's use that as an example, because I guarantee somebody will pull the card. It may not be yet, but somebody will. You're gonna get one of these sickos, and they're gonna say they identify. As a 14-year-old boy. 
Well, here's the thing. I've encountered that because I, I have a 50. I have a news story I'll pull up right now of a 54 year old man who was identifies with a 13 year old little girl and's got a brother, and they let it ride. Well, I actually volunteered with the people who did run to catch a predator, and I'm not going to say where I volunteered because. Uh, anonymity just to protect myself. Sure. But I was what they called a verifier. Meaning I would talk on the phone, sounding like an eight-year-old, so the guys thought they were talking to an actual child and not Can a we get you to call somebody wait, like wait, this? Wait, 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 <laughs> oh. I'm not going to say the area in which I was to protect myself. So protect I'm neither myself. going to confirm nor deny that. But I, I would get on the phone with these guys and it'd be a three minute conversation to assist in whatever sting perverted justice was setting up. By the way, if you want to um, volunteer for them, you have to be 21 years or older and you can volunteer through their website. They're a great organization. But they would encounter things like these loopholes all the time. But they have a team of people that, as you're chat logging with these um, sickos, that they go through Sick their goes. histories and there's enough evidence in the chat log despite what they claim that can be turned on them. They incriminate themselves. So even if at the end of everything they say, I identify as a 14-year-old, you have well over uh, five months plus of evidence against them uh, through the people who chat log on the computer, people like me who talk to them on the phone, and... Um, I'm finding somebody to call. Everything else. So, I mean, it's a matter of, yeah, they can say they identify as that as a loophole, but it isn't going to help anything. Oh, my. You, I know who we should call. We're totally going to call up high C. Come inside. Did you bring the Mike's Lemonade? I made cookies. I got to change my shirt, though. I got some chocolate on it. I'm totally calling high C. I am. Who is this person? He's going to know it's you. How? Not. <laughs> Because you're calling Because you have station. to call from someone else's uh -huh. phone. Damn it, man. You're going was... to call from the STLR station. He's gonna and he's like, going to be like, what the fuck? Why is STLR calling me? Uh, but it's a point that, you know, as far as identification goes for different people, for some people it's very real and very valid. So when people make these false claims, they're invalidating another person's experience by trying to find a loophole. And at the end of it, it's sick and disgusting. And honestly, like, we're back to the honesty thing. Oh, honesty you know? is dead of form. Dead art form there. Um, like, that. can can somebody give me the – the name of like a Taco Bell or something, and let's see, like that, if she can get free food out of them. No. How? Being... By speaking like a child? Yes. Tell them they messed up your order. No one's gonna take a five-year-old seriously. That's not true. I would totally. Tiny. Cat. Uh, uh, Tiny. Uh, yep, yep. Yep. Tiny says we should call Joey. No. What a great idea. He's heard that me work. do that before. It won't work. Damn it! <laughs> what a great idea, though. <laughs> How many crazy ass jobs have you had, Chelsea? It wasn't a job; it was volunteering, and I did it for about two, oh, two and a half years. And after a while, like I got so sick to my stomach, I couldn't do it anymore. Great call, Zach, coming in with the clutch. All right, so here's the here's the game plan. All right, because we know he's not watching and he's not here. Him. Yeah, he never does. So what I need you to do is, from the moment that he answers, if he answers, but when he answers. Little kid it the whole way through. Yeah. Oh we're we're going to call Touchy. We're calling Touchy. He's yeah. heard me do it. No, he hasn't. Doesn't matter. Yes. Doesn't matter. Hush. Fine. Okay. All right. Wait a minute. Where the fuck is the goddamn line one? Why are we whispering? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm way too excited about this. Huh? Don't make me laugh. This poor guy. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> I. Shh, shh, shh. You answer, you pig fucker. <laughs> you pig fucker. You need to mute me. Answer the phone. Answer the phone, dick. Leave him a message. Your call has been Leave him a message. an automatic voice message system. Damn. Did you hang up? Yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, honestly, if it was going to leave a voice machine, I'd be like, Hi, Mom said to call you to pick me up. I'm outside the Taco Bell on Colonial. Um, I've been here for 20 minutes, so please hurry. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. God. Somebody, somebody message me right now. Wait, wait, oh, wait. my God. 
He's giving me Wheels' phone number. We're totally calling Wheels. I can't do that to Wheels. <laughs> Doesn't oh matter. No, no, you no. can do it to a cripple kid. You, if you do it to Wheels, you need to be. You need to pretend to be his daughter. No, I'm not going that far. That's too far. Ah. Too far. And you can't make me. Okay. Um. All right. Ti- I Tiny, one. I like where your head's at, but no, that we can't do that one. Um. All right. Hold on. <clears throat> Have you ever, like, screwed around with that type of voice, or is that just something that you've done just to have um, fun? When I was younger, I would hear characters, like, cartoon characters that I really like, namely right. Harley Quinn, and I found out that I could imitate them. Huh. So um, it's mainly just something I do because it makes me laugh, but then I actually used it to do something good with my life, and um, after the fact, it's just now some, a weird trick I can do. A weird trick. Now, who was the first person you were ever able to do successfully? Um, that actually, I mean, and it was just when I started volunteering, they're like, anyone, you know, if you have trouble ordering pizza on the phone, let us know so you can be a verifier. And, um, I knew I could do Harley Quinn, so I figured maybe if I do that without the accent, it'll pass for a young child. And, uh, they were impressed with it. I got cleared to verify, um, from anywhere from someone who was eight, finger quotes around that, to 14. I have somebody in Damn. my phone that says slot one. Well, I wonder oh. who that is. I don't know who that is. All right, so do Harley Quinn, just so everybody can see just how legit this shit is. What do you want me to say? I don't care. Make something up. Mm, pressure. Hiya, Mr. J. It's your new and improved Harley Quinn. Holy shit. That's pretty good. I think yeah. she should start doing your intros. Oh, my God. What a great <laughs> idea. Oh, uh, man. Damn it, this is killing me. Somebody quick, give me a goddamn number. Quit fucking around here, people. And if you want to call into the station, it's 941-358-5701. Give us a call, okay? That's amazing. Holy yeah. shit. That blows the pecan sandies out of the water. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, it does. It's something that, I mean, watching the animated okay. series, she was like one of the only seriously like smart blonde characters. And where every other character I watched as a kid growing up that was blonde was a ditz. It was really cool to have a character that was a doctor. So that just became my thing that I was like, all right, I have to be as much like her as possible. <laughs> all right, let's see if we can get Touchy back on the phone. All right, let's see. All right, we got... All right, Touchy, don't be a dick. Don't be a dick, Touchy. Please just... don't be a dick. <laughs> and then tell him you're not going to touch his dick. <laughs> oh, God, ew. Nobody likes Your call has been forwarded to an Hold automatic on. voice. Hold on. We're going to have you leave a message. Okay. 160-B2 is not available. At the tone, <laughs> please, please leave your voice message. message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hey, it's Mandy. Mom said to call your phone. I'm outside the Taco Bell. I've been here for like 20 minutes. Um, Can you please come pick me up? It's the one on the corner of Daniels and Colonial. Um, Mom said to, that you would hurry, so call me back, please. Thank you. That was awesome. That was good shit. I don't that care. Was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I try. <laughs> The look on Zach's face is absolutely oh, horrendous. Dying. Why are you pink? If somebody has somebody who they want our wonderful voice impersonator to call, just to fuck with them, we can totally do it. All you gotta do is just message us, call in, give us a number. We don't care. I can do bubbles too. I. Oh. My name is Bubbles, and I'm hardcore. You would be like the weirdest phone sex operator on the planet. <laughs> right? <laughs> Hold on. Before we get to this, uh, can you do voices? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> no. Like I said, it was just a weird thing. Uh, as a kid, I had a really high-pitched voice, and I just found out I could do this. So it's a matter of like, ooh, what else can I do? Yeah, because you totally sound like a real like deep voice chick right there. So that's a little weird. Oh, one other thing. The number you have reached is not in service. At the tone, please leave your voice message. <laughs> what wow. the fuck, man? That's, that's so badass. So if you had guys or girls ask you to do these voices, like, 
bedroom stuff. Oh, not for bedroom stuff, but when I first met Zach, Would you? I was very, very shy, so my way of saying hello to him was just greeting him in Harley Quinn voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, at that time, I was 14 when I met him and absolutely terrified, but he was like the cool guy at Calusa Nature Center, and I wanted to say hi, but I didn't know how, so that was how I introduced myself to I him. I have a feeling your DMs are going to start blowing up. Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know if I would bring it into the bedroom. That'd be a little too weird, because like I said, this is something I do to make myself laugh. Unless somebody wants me laughing at their dick, I'm not going to do it in the room. <laughs> oh, shots fired. Columbine? So, Whoa. <laughs> so listen, I know I know we've done the uh, phone operator. We've done that. Uh, I know we've crossed over to Harley Quinn. Um, can you do bubbles for me this time around? I'm like, no. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. Oh, yeah. that bad. was Especially because Bubbles is a five-year-old. Oh, that's weird. Mm-hmm. Didn't you watch Powerpuff Girls? Everybody watched Powerpuff Girls, you know, with Mojo Jojo. I yanked it to Powerpuff Girls. I'm sorry. It was, it was a while ago, like yesterday. But <laughs> <laughs> a couple wow. of hours. things to add to the list. Adam. Look, Miller's no making the notation. <laughs> She's um, got to get a new wipe. I saw that face. She was like, mother. Noted. Mojo uh, Jojo. We have about 15 minutes left, guys. Um, what has anybody got going on this weekend? I know everybody usually has a whole menagerie of things that they're Good doing. Um, yo, what about you there, Vin? You know, um, voice thrower. You. Bear fucker. Uh, nothing planned, which is kind of nice. I'm not going out of town. I'm not pressured to, you know, really do anything so i'm just kind of le- let the pieces fall when i may okay it's fair exciting. enough exciting oh okay awesome miller i am co-hosting a nice little fourth of july bash tomorrow co-hosting where at um at a friend's house oh that doesn't count well i'm bringing food <laughs> and coolers and alcohol are you bringing yeah. cucumber sandwiches i am so horrible yeah Yeah. cucumber sandwiches picture this okay two (laughs) wonderful pieces of bunny bread Mm -hmm. with cucumbers and that's it that's not all that was on it no what else it was delicious it was that borzen garlic herb spreadable cheese and some cucumbers and some white bread with the crust cut off Cucumbers. It was a nice, like, it was hot out. It was nice, refreshing. And cucumbers and Ritz crackers, I can get behind, but Hashtag mustard? things white girls eat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Super white All girl. All that. All day. That with the bubbly. Yeah. The spritzer and <laughs> the grapes. The white wine spritzers. That's it. And yeah, can't hate on that. People who sit around and drink Perrier are fucking assholes. All right, uh, I can't get behind Perrier. Well, the thing, like, I always like to laugh at is people who are like, "I drink beer because it's manly." Like, you're drinking fermented wheatgrass and it's got a five percent alcohol content. My drink has a forty percent alcohol content and it's delicious. Appletini. And it makes me so bloated. Yeah, beer. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. So hate uh, yeah, all you want, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. I got in the car today and I was like, I need a beer. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. I was like, Do you want to call dad and tell him that you're going to drive with a beer? Yeah. Yeah, I will. You want to know why? Do you want to know why? Why? Because his name is Jody, and I feel like I can take anybody named Jody. My dad is six foot four and bordering on two seventy, all muscle. Oh, he looks like a wall. He is not a wall. My dad drinks white wine spritzers. See? I'm sorry? It's a manly drink. <laughs> Does he really? Oh, that's difficult. Because they're delicious. All right. So if your dad is this big, like, could you imagine, like, bringing a, you know, a Zach home to meet, you know, Papa Chelsea? He My loves me. My parents love him. He loves me. Well, that's because that you haven't walked up to him in true dickhead Zach fashion. He has, actually. Yeah, I've done that. And he went, excuse me? <laughs> Did you say that, hi, I'm the one sticking it in your daughter's ass right now. Nice to meet you. No, I never went that far. Although, like, I've, I've just, I'm, I'm a fuck to her mom. All the time, but she, she dishes it right back. And I am. I'm, I'm such a fuck to her mom. And her dad is just like, <sighs> ah. Zach. How are you, buddy? Like he, well, they don't really know what else to do with the boys. They're like, you know what, just ride. Well, it's because mom wears the pants in the family, and like dad will get snippy with her, and she she'll be like, "Do you want me to cut your allowance?" And he's just like, 
uh, yes, ma'am, you're the boss. And then Zach will say something snippy, and she'll be like, excuse me, and my dad's just dying in his chair. Because I just, I fire right back, and her mom just does the same thing. Like, I, I don't know. We just it's go hilarious. back and forth. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. All right, so when Miller's got it. her little white people parties to go to. <laughs> And Chelsea's doing absolutely nothing but probably double clicking the mouse all day. I have no idea what that means, but I'm very excited to do nothing. Like, have you ever made plans to do nothing? It's the best thing in the world. Today, I there's no don't pressure. Feel like doing anything. There you go. There's a song about it. What are you doing? Chilling this in your snuggie. Um, I, I would love to be able to do nothing. However, I have uh -huh. work all weekend, but. If I'm not working, then I have the Minion to entertain. Minion wants to go see uh, Captain Underpants. I remember reading those as a kid. That was around that long ago? Uh, Jason is the one who had them, and because he was reading them, I had to read them because we don't didn't have very many books in our house, so yeah. Ah, that makes sense. Zach, oh, what are you doing? Uh... The last time I revealed any information of what I was doing, cops were involved. So yeah, that's a good point. No, uh, um, I'm actually working for uh, Monday, Tuesday. I'm off, and then for the rest of the week, I'm working. But I'm dipping out early on Saturday. They don't know it yet, so whoever's watching this, make sure you let them know. I'm leaving early on Saturday. Yeah. And I'm driving to Orlando, and I'm picking up my motherfucking wrestling ring. Good for you. I I I support that decision. And I am just going to bump around and wrestle until my little heart is content. And then I have to be at work at fucking 8 a.m. on Sunday because, uh, <laughs> yeah. fucking, uh fucking adult. Uh, I would like to put out there that my brother works with Zach and I am Switzerland. I am not involved in any of this. Yeah. Um, sure you are. Took away not. my fucking Sunday nights, assholes. Now I gotta cook brunch for a bunch of college kids who are all uppity and pieces of shit who don't know their fucking alcohol limit. Oh yeah, that they are abrupt prick. Um, we are getting to that point in time of the show, but before we bounce out, we always like to do shout outs. So we'll let uh, Chelsea go ahead and throw some shout outs if she wishes. I want to shout out to my friend Rin. She's in Connecticut, but most likely watching. Mom, Dad, and Arlene Sorkin. Okay. Okay. Arlene Sorkin's the original Harley Quinn. All right. You owe me twenty bucks, lady. Why? Arlene owes me money. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't know <laughs> what you want. I owed you money. I was like, what did I do? Um, Miller, go ahead. Shout out to Lisa over at 210 Tavern who play this podcast over there every week. Love you guys. Um, shout Sweet. out to Kate the Scorpion Princess who made an appearance back on the feed today. Shout out to Justin, Tracy, Lolo, all my girls who are watching. See you next week. Oh, um, awesome. Zach, shout outs go. Weird. <sighs> I'm weird. You're Lolo. Weird. Something including Lego. Shout out to the Lego company. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> shout, out, shout to out to the guy who decided to run the Lego black market. That guy, I, I want to hug that guy. <laughs> because you've officially taken about 75% of my money. Like, I have a problem, guys. I'm about to be broke. Like, I'm buying a ring because I can't build one out of Legos because no one's willing to bump in it. So uh, I am most definitely not. Get knock off Legos. <laughs> like, so uh, shout out to the guy who's running the uh, Lego black market. Appreciate you. Uh, shout out to Erica over at Island and Buster doing her thing. You know, sponsoring us while we're sponsoring her. Oh, yeah. Are we sponsoring her? Yeah, why not? All right. Yeah, we're doing that. Um, <laughs> shout out to uh, all my personal sponsors, uh, Alex over at Ocean Grown, and uh, all my people over at Vapor Rango. I appreciate you. Vapor Think Rango. Thanks for making me able to do the things that I do. Um, and shout out to all my independent people just, uh, you know, doing their thing. And uh, everybody who is watching and chiming in. And, you know, let's just get weird. And I have to, just because it's there, shout out to fucking Johnny's plug-in vibe vibrator that we call gray skull yeah that's a knockoff shout out to kinky kitty yeah well, yeah you know what if kinky kitty really wants a shout out tell him to give me a call and advertise um other than that <laughs> maybe they can sponsor zach's <laughs> like lego our our lego contest <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, there you go. Dude, you have no idea. I'll, like, I started actually. No, I'm on we, board for this. Could we get a girl to pleasure herself with a dildo made of Legos? Zach Is that could. a thing? Zach now, could find someone. I believe it. Oh, I believe I'm that. I'm going to add that to it. my notepad. Oh, hell no. Uh-uh. <laughs> you, do, you don't know how to say no. Hard limit. See, like, no I... I once came up with the idea of you've heard of two girls one cup, right? Yes. Okay. Two girls one Lego. Gross, horrible, right? I wanted to find a girl who was willing to get in a bathtub, and I wanted to film it with an octopus because an octopus, the only thing hard on it is its beak. Okay. Yep. So it's able to slide in and out of really tiny, small crevices. Oh my god, what a great idea! So I wanted to f- film a video of a girl getting off with a squid inside her and call it uh, "One Girl Eight Tentacles." Nice. Uh, just hentai. I got. That's all I got for you is the word hentai. Yeah, but that's uh, that's all cartoon. It yeah, doesn't need yeah. to be real. It's like just, no, I'm I'm gonna make it real. All right, I would like to give a shout out to Cody because Cody keeps pestering for a shout out. Shout out to Tiny because he's been plowing his old lady for 10 months. Good for Yay. you. Good for you, Tiny. Good for you for being a one man kind of man. Monogamy. Yeah, yeah monogamy. And Brittany. You're monogamy. Yeah. Brittany. And shout out to Captain for calling on in. Uh, let's see. Shout out to anybody else important. Uh, fuck it. Yeah, we'll go Howie. Howie's cool to shout out. <laughs> um,. Eric Wiley, nah, go somewhere, burn in hell. Um, Goldie. <laughs> Any person who calls himself Goldilocks can't be a freaking mutt woman. I'm sorry that they just can't. I beg to differ. Have you ever met an ugly Goldilocks? I haven't. I have. I've never met a Goldilocks, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. I will show you pictures later. Oh, that's that's weird. Awesome. Uh, shout out to Jackbox. Even though that you're on my shit list, buddy. But shout out to you. <laughs> shout out to Summer and shout out to all my busted bitches on Tinder. Aww. You are somebody's reason for masturbating. You're just not mine. And that's okay. And I like it that way. We will be back here next Monday. Same bat time, same bat channel. I am one half of your presidential Masters of America, aka the man who is the king of the no BS show. And the only reason why you even listen to radio on a Monday, I am Johnny Christ. I am the other half of your presidential masters of America, your friendly neighborhood Columbine kid, and the king of the seven seas. I am the human horror show, <laughs> Zach Monster. I was hoping you'd add Beautiful. that Beautiful. And I am the white girl always on blast. Miller out. Wow. And on that... N- no, Chelsea, say something. And I'm your favorite Harley Quinn impersonator, Chelsea. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. We appreciate everything. Remember, what we say is more than the word. It's, it's the, the gospel. gospel. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. All right. You know how many times I've Very heard? poor choice of words. Now get out of here. Not like you. We're grown-ups, motherfucker. What?